If you're here for any information about Anadonia or anything else that's happening on the channel, stick around till the end of this video. I will be doing a section at the end that tells you all about that stuff. But for now, welcome to the review. Oh! Hello there! Nice to see you! You caught me in the middle of, um... Vandalism. Uh, but, if you're here, that must mean that you are here for the comparison and review of the 12th Doctor's screwdriver. Not just the chromium version from the BBC, but in fact, the metal version from Neiwa Replicas. I hope I'm saying that right. So if you are... Welcome to the show. Getting down to business. First things first, introductions. I'm the Drifter. I'll be your host for today. These are the screwdrivers. The uh, chromium and the metal replica. Now, let's put this one off to one side to begin with because the first thing I want to go over is the chromium one, okay? This is the special edition that was uh, released when the original 12th Doctor toy uh, was released. And uh, it's special because, well, I mean... Shiny. From what I could gather, it's also special because of the extra modes that it comes with. The normal version only had the blue and the green. However, the chromium version comes with the spinning blue, which is quite slow, and it goes, uh, I think that's clockwise. Yeah, that spins clockwise. And it also has the red. Yeah, there we go. It goes red, and then you can turn it off. And uh, it also has the flashing green, which is on and off. And it has the torch mode on three presses, which actually acts as a pretty good torch, which is probably why they call it torch mode. Just a guess. But now that we've gone over the functions and why it's special and what it is, I want to go over the specific details uh, about this screwdriver and uh, my opinions on it, because, I mean, that's why you're here. Unless you're here for the metal one, in which case... Wait around for a little bit. Um, but the first thing I want to point out is that this thing is very flimsy. Obviously, it is a toy. It's not going to be die-cast and indestructible. Uh, but it does feel quite easy to break. I'm applying the smallest amount of pressure there, and you can already see that it's kind of bending. Um, not to say that it'd be easy to snap. I'm not going to, because I would genuinely cry. Um, but it is one of those things where if you are quite heavy-handed, like me... Um, pressing this and flicking it and spinning it about you do run the risk of potentially sort of bending it uh, i found quite a lot i'm having to push it back into place to straighten it out the glass at the top isn't glass i don't know why i called it glass it's actually just clear white plastic okay it's not tinted or anything like that it is just white plastic and as far as i can tell the screws on this thing i have tried tightening them these ones are real the back one uh, but these ones that are indented in the metal don't look real. They are, in fact, part of the, uh, well, casting for it. And in fact, there's an easy way to test that. Yeah, if I try at it with an Allen key, yeah, that's not real. As far as battery life on this uh, goes, it's very efficient. I haven't had to change the battery once since I've had this, and I've had this for about three months now. Uh, granted, I don't use it all the time. I'm not a child, as much as you might think otherwise. Um, I do tend to just buzz it around a lot. It's a little bit of a stim toy for me, I'm going to be honest. But it's not run out in all that time, so it's very efficient on battery. Uh, speaking of batteries, if you want to know how to change it, I nearly said that the wrong way. you got to twist and pull. And uh, that takes off the bottom part and releases the uh, battery compartment, which you can unscrew just there. And uh, that's the comprehensive review of the Chromium Screwdriver. Uh, personally, out of this one and the Metal Replica, it is a very tough call on which one I prefer. Honestly, I really love how shiny this is. Uh, and I think on aesthetic points alone, I have to give this one like a point in terms of edge. It, it beats the other by about a point, and that's just on my own personal preference, because I like that it's shiny. Um, but yeah, you've got the, uh, Chromium Screwdriver. Now, unlike the 12th Doctor Chromium Screwdriver that I bought three months ago, I actually have the packaging 
for the Neiwa replica screwdriver, mainly just because I haven't thrown this out, unlike the other one, just because I actually really like this one, and I must say it is a very sexy piece of packaging. In comparison to the way that the uh, previous screwdriver was packaged, this is definitely a step up. It is a very well-crafted cardboard box with the logo at the top and the bottom, and if you've already seen glimpses of it as I've been spinning it, it has the 12th Doctor's final words, or at least some of his final words, printed on both sides. Laugh hard, run fast, and be kind. And uh, I really love that little detail simply because the Twelfth Doctor, if you couldn't already guess, is my favourite. And he has been since I first saw him on screen. I thought for a long time my Doctor was ten, but it was not. Oh no, it was not. My Doctor was twelve. And um, that's why I'm, I'm really baffled by this small print error, and I can't say that it's on all boxes because I've only got one, but I find it really funny that you've got such nice detailing on the side of the box, on the front of the box, well, top of the box, front of the box, with the screwdriver and the nice print and the smooth cardboard, and then you misspell second on the front of the box. Secund. You don't spell it with a U. But yes, in case you can't tell, and in case I forget to record close-up shots of this, it says the Twelfth Doctor's second sonic screwdriver replica. Metal replica. If we open up the box... There we go, let me just put this off to one side. Uh, there's obviously a layer of foam at the top to keep it nice and safe and secure inside the box. It also comes with instructions, but I did throw those away, simply because... I don't need them. And uh, underneath that layer of foam, you have packaged rather nicely inside the metal replica. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this is obviously it is a lot heavier than the regular screwdriver because it is in fact made out of metal. The second thing you'll notice is it is quite that bit less shiny than the chromium replica. And again, that is simply just because it's not chrome, it's metal. But what it lacks in chromium, it makes up for in the sheer metallic sheen that it has, okay? Let me get you another close-up of this Sonic. There we go, as you can see, the 12th Doctor screwdriver right there. It uh, keeps auto-focusing between my face and the screwdriver. Sorry about that, I'll see if we can get a uh, cutting shot later. And honestly, like I said, it's only a point of difference that I prefer the look of that one. This one is still my baby, and it's the one I'm going to be carrying around with me for the rest of my life. But, on to how it looks. Everything, first of all, like I said, a lot heavier. It is cut from metal. Second thing is it's a lot easier to, uh... I was going to say break then. No, that's not what I wanted to say. It is a lot harder to bend this one, okay? It is solid metal. I don't feel like it's going to snap at all tugging that. It does obviously feel a little weak in the center, but that's because it's the structural weak point of the screwdriver. That's not an issue of either of them. But yeah, obviously a lot tougher to bend. Uh, the next thing that I want to point out is that the plastic in the tip, in the emitter, isn't actually white. It is blue. It's slightly tinted blue in this, and uh, the last thing I want to point out uh, is that unlike with the Chromium one, surprisingly one of the things that they did get wrong that I'm only noticing now that I'm comparing the two is that the actual switch for the emitter on the metal one is slightly crooked, but when compared to the issues with this one, well, I'm willing to take that sort of trade-off because well, I mean, if I get a little close again, and I show you the sides of these, you'll notice that this one, the chromium one, that side piece there, it's separated. There's a crack down the middle. That's how it came. That wasn't me messing with it. That's actually just how it arrived. And it's on both sides, the split. Whereas on this one, it is perfectly flush to the main body. And it's screwed in with, uh, same as this one, real bolts. Um, and speaking of real bolts, the ones on the bottom casings here. The chromium one is fake, it's real on this one. You can untighten and tighten them as you see fit. Also, there's an up-close comparison of the colour of the emitters. This one's darker, this one's slightly lighter because it's, you know, different material. Now, the gripe I was going to mention earlier that I didn't, that uh, I think is really worth pointing out, uh, is that the bottom of the Sonic, the part that 12 says to scan to that one Dalek in that one episode, because apparently it's the data banks of the Sonic or whatever, uh, it's crooked. 
on both of them. Uh, and that's not a fault of the uh, cutting or anything like that. It is simply just because that's how the uh, screw was threaded. I'm not sure if that's the correct term. But you know how this is the battery compartment if we twist this and pull it off? Well, it's got those tiny little grooves in that you screw together. And uh, they're just slightly misaligned. So when both of them are fully tightened, that bottom piece does not align with the top emitter switch. It's slightly off to the side. Which again, not a big issue, but for someone like me that's really OCD about these things, it does get on my nerves quite a bit. Same as the, you know, misaligned emitter switch, which I only noticed making this review, so that is gonna bug me. But moving on from the aesthetics, because I don't believe there's anything else that needs to be covered, time to get on to the big difference between these, which is of course, the sonic part of the screwdriver. So one big difference between these two, obviously, as I mentioned several times before, is that the plastic in the emitter is different, which means it's gonna uh, diffuse the colors differently. Uh, but another big thing that you might not know is that this is a clicking a, a button and, and, and this is a pulling one. Uh, and I realized I just porgy pigged myself with the and a ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da and uh, that's because I didn't actually know what to call these and I made that up on the spot. But what I mean by that is if I want to activate the uh, colors on this one, I hold it down and it stops when I let go. You can hear I'm intentionally flicking my thumb off of the switch in order to make the clicking sound. Whereas with the metal one, it is fully just a switch. If I pull it down, it will stay there, even if I'm not holding it. So it will stay on the whole time, uh, which is a really cool addition. I don't think there's any screwdriver that's actually been released other than this one that has that kind of feature. If I just quickly grab TENS screwdriver, uh, just the plastic model, nothing special about it, it is just TENS screwdriver. You know, one of the first that was ever released, I think, because all of the classic ones came after when the show's popularity increased. Don't quote me on that, I could be entirely wrong. It's just press and buzz, and you let go when it stops, as are all of them. I think, genuinely, this is the first one that has the little click that allows you to keep it on, and I really love that small detail. But of course, it does have its downsides, because while I can just click this on, and flip it about, and throw it about, and have it always stay on, it does make it a little harder to change modes. You see, with the Chromium one, I can just pull down one, two, and hold, and it will activate whichever mode I want. Whereas with this one, because it clicks into place, it's very fiddly. I have to pull it down one, two, to get it into that scanning mode, and the only reason I was able to get it that accurately is because I've been playing with it since I got it. If I want to pull it down into the red mode, the one that's like, I don't know, self-destruct or something, one, two, three, if I mess it up even slightly, I don't know if you could hear the clicking in the microphone, if I mess it up even slightly by going too far up, the wrong mode plays. Which obviously on the Chromium version you don't have that issue, one, two, three. Nice and simple. I think it does just come down to practice. I mean, it's the metal version, it's the next step up. It requires you to have a little more know-how and a little more practice to use it, which I think is actually quite a fun learning curve for what is supposed to just be a collector's toy. But yes, that's how they're activated. Now to get into the actual modes. So uh, I'll do a test with the lights on so you can compare together and then I'll switch them off and I'll show you how bright they are. But if you just pull down once, you get blue. I forgot it was a switch. If you pull it down twice, you get the spinning blue. Uh, and there's actually, I don't know if you can hear me over the sound of this or not, there's actually a very interesting fact about this one. The metal one is faster and it goes in the other direction. If I point these both at the camera, you can see they spin in opposite directions and faster. I don't know why they made that change. Personally, I do prefer the faster one that goes the other way because it's more screen accurate. Um, but it, it is a change nonetheless, so I'm going to demonstrate it here. Uh, pulling it down three times like I showed you earlier, one, two, three. That's the uh, red mode. And I do have a bit of a gripe with this one that applies to both of them. And that's, do you hear that? It's very obvious when the audio loops. Um, which I feel like would be a very easy fix as someone that's played around with audio quite a lot for most of his life. Um, all it would require is, you know, doing some extra work. Uh, I was going to explain how to do it then, but the moment I tried, everything that I'd just learned over the course of the many, many years I've done audio left my head. 
so I might take that out of the video because it's very humbling right after bragging. The same applies for the metal one. If I pull it down three times, one, two, three, red mode, and as you can hear, the audio very obviously loops. But now if we go up with them, uh, up one is green. Up two is pulsing green, which is a little different in the chromium one, two in the metal one. The noises they make are slightly different. This one is more looping and uh, lower pitched, whereas this one's higher and it's very obviously it's got that extra audio engineering that makes it a little smoother. And obviously the biggest difference is this one turns fully off the light and this one just pulses. And of course the last mode that you can test out is torch mode. This one produces a completely white light. Uh, it does have a slight effect. If I point it at a wall, I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, especially with, you know, the lighting. Uh, I'll actually, I'll do that on the one where the lights are off. Uh, but it does have a weird effect where you can see the individual RGB lights inside being projected. It acts almost like a projector through the other LEDs. Um, and it's much the same on this one, except the pattern is different. If I, one, two, three, put it in torch mode, again, you can't tell because, I mean, the lights are on. But you'll see in the next version of this test. Either way, those are all the modes that both screwdrivers have. Those are the differences between them. Let's flick these lights off and let's do a bit of a darkness test. that's the full review completed. Um, as for why I wanted to do this in the first place, it's mainly just because I thought this was a scam. I'm gonna be very honest, I'd never heard of, uh, what is it, Neiwa? Nauya replicas? Uh, before they released this, it looks to be their first ever product. And uh, according to the way their Instagram looks, I honestly genuinely thought all they were going to do is take one of these, strip it of its casing, and add the metal onto it. And for all I know, they still very well just did that. I'm not smart enough or knowledgeable enough in that area to be able to make that call either way. Um, but to be completely honest, I genuinely think that the differences between them more than makes up for that, if that is in fact what they did. Because the quality is genuinely out of this world, especially when you consider that the official BBC Metal 12th Doctor screwdriver is infinitely more expensive and probably isn't actually as functional. I wouldn't know, I've never had one of their screwdrivers, because from the looks of it, they've never had any of their screwdrivers. They've been out of stock for the past several years. But yeah, honestly, a really good piece of kit. I can't recommend it enough, especially if you're in the market for some metal screwdrivers. The overall price for this, I paid £98, although the actual item was worth £40-ish, uh, and the rest of it was postage and packaging and shipping and VAT and all of that sort of stuff. And I think that's how they make their money back. If I'm going with the theory, and it is just a theory, I want to put that out there as a disclaimer, I'm not saying they do, I just think it might be what they're doing. If we're going with the theory that they are just reskinning these, that's probably how they make their money back, considering the base price of these, specifically the chromium one, is also around £48. Um, I got mine, both of these, from eBay. Um, not secondhand though, I believe they sold them to distributors that are then selling them through eBay and probably tacking on their own fees because their own Instagram page does not have a place to buy these from. But yes, with all of that said, I think that does in fact conclude this review. So, 
If you've found it helpful or useful or if you've enjoyed it or me or my personality or anything like that, make sure to leave a like, a comment and a subscription. I don't do these videos very often, but I want you to subscribe anyway because I like money. Um, and it also just makes me feel a little more valued. Self-centered, I know, but these days YouTubers aren't exactly honest and I feel like if I get my intentions out there from the get-go, you might appreciate that a little bit more. I'm British, by the way. Most of that was sarcasm. Ah, uh, but yes. Now on to the last bit of uh, information that I wanted to include in this video. More for my regular fans. Hello there. It's me again. I disappeared off the face of the earth again. Came back again with a different series altogether again. Um, but just a bit of an update on how things are going. So I recently got a job. I know. Amazing. Uh, I hate it. Every second of it. It is hell on earth and I am genuinely considering Um, that's a joke. That can't go in the video. So I'm saying it's a joke and cutting it from the video. Um, but because of that, I've been very, very, very busy and unable to do YouTube because while this is my hobby and I don't have to dedicate as much time to it because of that, unfortunately, I don't have the time to dedicate even when I want to. So while I do have all of the footage for the last episode of Anadonia all recorded and squared away in my editing drive, I have not touched it yet. Um... I'm in the process of working on a very special uh, movie found footage horror type video uh, in Minecraft, which I'm pretty proud of, all things considered. Ruby's in that too, if you miss him. Um, and as for when I'm coming back, I don't know. I really don't. Um, I'm tempted to just start making random videos like this, um, to be honest, just because I really like it. Um, I am still working on the overall roleplay series that I mentioned before. My alma mater, my pride and joy, will be finished eventually. Um, I've got most of the planning done for season one. You bitch. Bitch! Camera just turned itself off on me. Maximum recording time allotted. What kind of camera are you? Hey? Maximum recording time. But where was I? Oh, yeah. Alright, um. Yada yada yada, blah 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 blah. I am still alive for those of you that care um i really just miss creating so i think i'm just gonna start creating um yeah like i said if you've enjoyed this video like subscribe all of that stuff and i'll see you around oh you know that's not my outro is it hang on reverse that and in case i don't see you good morning good evening good afternoon and good night from me the drifter i bid you adieu bye bye Wait, I don't have to turn the camera off, I can just do this again. Ah.